I'll just edit this so it'll be the beginning. Yeah, look off it a little bit. No, slow, slower. Come on. Look, look slowly. Yeah, pensive. Hi, I'm Kelsey. <laughs> I'm Ian. <laughs> We're doing a video vlog on top of a really cool building in campus. It's called El Paseo. And Super I'm gonna see the pan up real quick. Dang, look at that view. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, we wanted to do a, um, a serious video blog to seriously Jeez. say hello. Um, Hi. And we've been here for a month in Quito, Ecuador. And um, I, I've been doing some blogging and stuff like that and you all have been some super super supportive fantastic friends and family and just just I, I love y'all so much thank you for 1,000 views that's way more than I anticipated getting um, Kelsey do you have a blog you want to throw to? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll throw it to my mama though yeah throw, you know? throw to your mama say hello yeah. to your mama so um, <laughs> we just wanted to do just a quick little video to give some impressions of the first month of being here mm -hmm. because uh, it is a really different place to be in in so many awesome ways I feel like I'm growing um, uh, what, what were your first impressions what it for the first month what first month impressions yeah number one mountains mountains, mountains. galore like at all times actually being surrounded by mountains all the time all like, the times on the on the butt do you have a view do you have a good view from your room where you uh, live yeah yeah, yeah I do. I, I'll wake up and I'll pull back and I'll pull back the, the shades and it, I feel like I need to have that like stereotypical morning greet the morning song the da na 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 because I'm just looking out over just it's just gorgeous and then but like, not only do you have to say good morning to them you have to say good night to them too like all the time so yesterday I was on my ride home from you know my bakering class bakering oh bakering <laughs> you were baking some I stuff English. you you pretty baked yeah. <laughs> But it was like sun setting behind Cotopaxi. Like, oh my god. And you don't always see Cotopaxi. It's like a present. You're just like, oh my god, there it is. And like, Cotopaxi's like straight up, like, stereotypical snow volcano. Yeah, thing. so for those of you who don't know, Cotopaxi is one of the biggest volcanoes. It is a volcano, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's active. one of the biggest uh, active volcanoes. And it was giving a lot of grief just not that long ago because it was spewing some fumes and they thought it was going to erupt which is terrifying we also need to we need to have our own um like emergency kits just in case that happens don't be scared it's fine it's 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 chilled out enough that people can go visit all the canned soup yeah it's okay <laughs> canned soup okay. bottled okay. water we'll be fine but um yeah it, you, as you're going especially when we're on our way to school you can ride the bus and like look off into the distance and see it and just last week did you see it when it was like covered in snow I mean, it's still covered in snow. Well, is it ever not covered in snow? Uh, no, it wasn't at first. When we first got here, it was not covered in snow, but now it is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It is. It is really a treat to look at. So, mountains, mountains, mountains all the time. Mountains is a number one. Yeah. Two Spanish, Spanish all the time. Everyone here is like, if you picture like what, how like how we speak in like a first grader, like as a first grade teacher, like their Spanish is that beautiful and clear. The, yeah. A it, lot of people. Uh, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. If you've ever had to like call for a taxi, it is definitely not like okay, that. Anything I'm... through any sort of communication is a no. Uh, but... I, I've been hung up on by a taxi operator just because we could not <laughs> communicate. There's only so many ways you can say sorry, pardon, what, before you just like are not moving the conversation forward <laughs> anymore. But uh, at this point, I, I feel like I've improved so much in the past mm -hmm. month being here. Yeah. Um, you're a, you're a Spanish major, so like this is this is your <laughs> this deal. This is my thing. Yeah, so it needs to be my thing. Are you anyway. feeling like you're you're improving? How's your confidence coming with this? Absolutely. Kind of? Okay, so I think confidence is actually one of the only things that you kind of need to be able to speak a language because everyone makes mistakes. Like I make mistakes in English. I said bakering, so <laughs> like <laughs> I, I like say stuff like that in Spanish too. But you just got to know you're gonna do it and you just go for it anyways. And then even like yesterday, my mom's like, "Yeah, you've been really improving. You just." speak really quickly now and I was like do I do I and then I got really excited have you had any milestones where you were just like wow I, I really can sense how much I've improved like okay. when your mom told you that was yeah. that a milestone yeah or? and not only with those milestones it's like the little things it's like when you conjugate a verb without going through the conjugations in your mind and you just like tell a story and you're <laughs> like I just told that in the past yeah suck it 
Oh my gosh, if That's I can do that, if I can do sure. that in subjunctive, I think I can just mm -hmm. I can just be happy with with my Spanish level right there. But mm -hmm. or just life in general. Life in general. Yeah. I'm done learning languages. Yeah. That's it. I can do subjunctive <laughs> without thinking about it. Um, yeah, for me, I had I had something similar to that. Uh, I mean, it's, it, like you said, it's the little things that do it. Like I, I, I had to put in a reservation for a karaoke bar room, um, which was didn't end up working out well. But like the reservation was fantastic. I called and I was so worried because like I already have like phone anxiety where I'm pacing around being like, oh, what if they don't understand what I'm saying, or what if I'm stumbling over my words? But like. It could not have gone any smoother. It was just like, hey, uh, can I have a reservation? Yeah, how much is it gonna cost? Any more info? Cool, bye. It was great. Nobody asked multiple times what I was saying, how to how to say my name, which was surprising as well. Po because I, I, I introduced myself as Adrian here, and if I have to do my last name, it's Pomodoy, because it's just, it makes more sense. But um, yeah, stuff like that. We're just sitting at the Dining, the dining room table. Yeah, we mess up in English too. The dining room table and having like really deep conversations with the family. Um, we were talking about like religion and spirituality yesterday at the table, which a month ago I would have had some serious anxiety talking about, but it was, it was fairly fluid and that felt pretty good. Um, other impressions? Food. What do you think about the food? How do you feel about rice now? I will forever love rice. Really? I still love rice and will eat rice for every meal and I'm so okay with it. I gotta switch arms, my arms so get tired. Okay with it. Yeah, I, uh, our friend Kuhn is, is super tired of uh, super tired of rice. He's also been here for longer than we have, but I feel so bad for him because every meal here is with rice. Um, that's wonderful for me because like mom, my mom cooks rice every single day. Mom, you're, you're gonna love it when you get here. It's just rice on rice on rice. Uh, it's like the Philippines and, and Ecuador as far as the rice content, so that's wonderful. Um, and I like the regional portions of the food a lot. So like in each location, it's it's known for a different kind of food. Um, for example, Cayambe has bizcochos, um, and in the coast there's ceviche. Um, Some solid ceviche too. Yeah, solid ceviche. Different areas are known for like different styles of things, you know, like a certain neighborhood does really good empanadas de queso and... What, what neighborhood is that? Um, there's, like, ours... You're gonna show me this neighborhood? Ours, ours has a fantastic... <laughs> yeah, so, and, and it's so cool because you can go and get all of these really cool traditional foods um, for very affordable prices and have them really good in very unassuming places. You can just go to like a mom and pop shop and like our neighborhood is the one that has a really good uh, empanadas de queso place and uh, morocho which is a type of sweet corn, um, like a sweet corn drink. It's, it's warm, it's good. I'm gonna try and do a food blog over there at some point so we can do something just to explore that. Oh yeah, be on the lookout for a food blog um, to kind of encompass some of the stuff that I've eaten. Have you taken a lot of pictures of food? No. I'm too scared to have my iPhone out at all times. Oh, that's, ooh, that's another first impression, <laughs> is, uh, can we, you want to sit down? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to reposition here. We're going to sit closer to our stuff, too, because yeah. it has to do with what we're lizzie, talking lizzie, about lizzie, in general. Lizzie. So anyways, yeah, so one of we the got things... a uh, hardcore talking to like 17,000 times, always have our stuff close to us. So now that we're actually yeah, <laughs> sitting by our stuff. to our stuff. <laughs> So we don't have to worry about it as okay. much. Yeah, so um, in, in some ways I think it was a little bit over overdone, our security talks. Um, obviously in any big city you have to be careful of security, you know, you don't want to be whipping out your, your wallet and showing everybody mm -hmm. that you have a lot of money in big open areas. Pickpockets are really common in, in really any big city. Um, so it's, it's nothing to specifically say about Ecuador in general, but it's um, it's good to be aware of. I mean, and having your phone out, especially like iPhones that cost like fifteen hundred dollars here. Yeah, electronics because of the the taxes are extremely high here because there's not an infrastructure to build electronics here. Um, everything has to be imported, and in order to help the economy here, there's a lot of taxes on things that are imported so that you will buy domestically. But you can't buy an iPhone that's been made in Ecuador, really. So everything is very expensive if it's electronic. So mm -hmm. having out a iPhone like we have right now um, <laughs> is is you, you just don't do it. You don't whip it out on a on a mm -hmm. bus. I mean, locals will kind of do it, but mm -hmm. um, I think a portion of it is like. Another thing that I've noticed is like I am acutely aware of how gringo I am at all times, um, like very, very much so. And, and I think everybody should have a point in their life where they are 
kind of uncomfortably in the minority because then you can really kind of relate to a lot of the things that are going on in the world. But um, like especially here, it's there's there's an idea of gringos, I think, um, because a lot of people will come and move here and not really respect the culture, not try and learn the language, they'll retire here. Um, or people who will just come and sightsee, it's tourists, just like that typical American kind of idea. Um, or the idea of a typical American and so yeah just just being smart with your with your technology and making sure it doesn't shut off on you when you're recording or something like that um, no but like overall it's just the same thing that you would you would think in anywhere else but you because Quito is so populated and densely um, yeah, just densely populated. You're on the bus a lot with people and you have like no room between people. It's just like you and homeboy on your left are super close really quickly. Don't forget on the right to the back and to the front. Right, the back to the front. Homeboy's everywhere. Homeboy's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's just like keeping your, 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 your belongings in a place that you know so people aren't dipping their hands in your bag and getting it. Um, it, it, like it happens everywhere but like it's especially on this campus it, I feel at least safer some people I saw someone get her iPhone stolen on this campus so I'm still like oh I'm not gonna let people even know that I have an iPhone so I'm gonna keep it forever with me yeah not I, out and about like that's the thing like once they know you have it they're like oh like yeah, I'm gonna when, watch where you put that and when you walk like here I'm gonna know yeah when you're chatting with your friends and not paying attention or something like that it's uh, I don't know I don't carry my phone with me I carry this one this little nice uh, oh, you don't carry the phone with you that you have right now um, I, I usually don't so I have my <laughs> iPhone today because I wanted to come and do some blogging but I ran out of data uh, or ran out of storage on my phone so I will bring my laptop to campus but that's because it's like I get on the bus I come to campus on campus I have it with me all the time mm -hmm. and then I go home. Like, it's pretty easy to feel when you don't have your laptop in your backpack too. Yeah also my backpack <laughs> weighs like 20-30 like pounds. I'm gonna have some serious back Whoa. problems from this stupid computer. It's just like I if they were to lift that without me noticing it I would let them have it because like that thing is a brick. Um, but yeah you just have to be smart with your things and, and um, that's something that you're not really I'm not used to because I'm used mm -hmm. to being in like a very very safe university um, living in kind of a ruralish area where it's just not densely populated. We don't take public transport because it wouldn't make sense to get out to each area. Um, public transport. Public transport. <laughs> public transport. That could be a video in itself. Oh, oh my gosh. So many things can happen on public transport. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do some sort of <laughs> vlog video. Um, reenactment reenactment I, something with the the public transport because it is so integral to this particular area um, and <laughs> like you, you, it was kind of, it was one of the more stressful things for the first couple of days was getting used to the bus route. I would say interesting that's stressful Oh, it stressed me out because like I'm just not used to getting on buses and stuff like that I was constantly worried I was gonna get on the wrong bus and end up in Tumbaco and <laughs> Like, I don't know, it, <laughs> once you get used to it, like it took a week, but like, I feel mm -hmm. super comfy on the buses now, as far as like getting from point A to point B. Again, mountains. Mountains, mountains all yeah. around you on that bus. Um, buses cost 25 cents. Um, all the change. It, it's great. <laughs> Ecovia runs through the, um, one of the main arteries <laughs> of, of Quito. Ecovia is the one. So that's a separate bus line. That's the one that like, you were about to get very well acquainted with people. Did I tell you about the time I people. tried to get into the Ecovia? No, did you no. have to like yeah, so, get a running start into it? Oh, absolutely. So I, it was when I left my passport at the, you know, the place where we left our passports for our visas. Oh yeah. And it closed at four. And so we're hopping on the Ecovia at about 320 and literally running. So first we try, we're like, oh, let's do taxi. And then you realize when you do taxi, like you're stopped you get all light, you're stopped. You get all another light, you're stopped. And then you like look over and you're like, shit, that Echo Via is like all in its middle lane, all going by itself. So we're like, okay, get off of this taxi because this is expensive. As we're getting on to this Echo Via, it's already one. We didn't have to, usually you can pick a door that's kind of like, oh, that one looks like it has less people. No, we were like, I was sprinting. And so my person in front of me, Kuhn, he went in, the door is closing like dramatically, dramatically closing in front of me. And I like one handed in slow motion. He like holds it open. I like push this way into this person. And then like the door just 
snaps on my body completely. <laughs> like my my um, what is this? My ankle is like half out, and I like do the whole jab and like ram into the person in front of me thing. And by so, like person in front of me, I mean like seven people in front of me. The doors don't <laughs> do the thing in some places where like they sense pressure and they'll no, be open like an elevator door. Closed. No, like. <laughs> I was with a friend and she was she was like waving goodbye and the door closed on her arm and we just see her arm just like yeah. trying to wiggle out of the door. It's 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 something different. It's, it's something real. to behold. Um it it is a source of some great joy in, in my life, the public transport. <laughs> Unless here. you get shit stolen. Unless you get stuff stolen. Luckily, um Not so much of a joy. knock on wood, nothing's happened. But um yeah, public transport language, food, uh culture here is super, super cool. What else? Any other big things? I think that's it. Like, Sunshine, it's, it's, sunburn every oh day of my, my life. Oh my gosh, the, the elevation makes I'm the currently thinking so about that right now. If I'm you can't feeling tell, it. You can see the shine on I my think forehead. I'm getting sunburn on my thighs through my jeans. You're wearing some very dark jeans, too. <laughs> I like it's so really like, hot. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the, the elevation is really interesting to get used to the first couple of days as well because everybody kind of handles it a different way. And if you're doing any sort of exercise, you really start to feel it. My muscles started to cramp up a lot. Um, I don't think anybody else had that. Uh, some people have stomach problems. I had some a lot of gas. Um, I'm gonna talk about my gas <laughs> on this vlog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we could get into the whole. I actually think stomach this is, issues here in general. Everybody talks about gas and poop and stomachs. Yeah, it's really it's so easy. It's really open because I feel like everybody has had a bad ceviche or a bad almuerzo or something <laughs> like that where they. You just I think I've heard the word diarrhea here like more times than I have like. Yeah. Oh, you had diarrhea yesterday? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's, no, it's currently going on this morning. I'm going to see you guys in a bit. That's actually how we <laughs> greet each other is like, hey, how solid was your poop this morning? Yep. <laughs> that's how that's I not even my day. like a joke. Like, we <laughs> do honestly surreal. do that. Um, maybe that's just us. Maybe that's weird. But uh, uh, that was one of the things, you're, like being in a new place, getting used to the food and stuff like that, you, you have to be aware of. And definitely, if you're going to come visit here, bring, or just anywhere, always bring Tums. Always bring, Tums. like, you think Tums are really gonna fix that? Uh, I pop Tums like Tic Tacs. I didn't bring any like, Tums, and I am a champ. Antacid, I have had diarrhea, but uh, I'm a champ. Something to fix your stomach with. So like that would be a good thing to do. Um, I, we can't end on poop. We can't <laughs> end on poop. We gotta end on something other than poop. Um, I tried to end on the sunshine, man. That was a yeah. positive note. Let's go back to elevation. Elevation is a crazy <laughs> thing, but the sun is also stronger because of the elevation. If you come bring a bunch of sunscreen. Sunscreen's very expensive here. That's another revelation is uh like I said, I'm getting sunburned currently. So yeah, we're gonna we should probably let's yeah, we're gonna like we'll pan call out this quits into the mountains now. or pan something. Out. Let's do something artsy like that. Um looking forward to the next couple months here. We've got <laughs> three here left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Things are going really quickly here, so uh it's almost October. What the hell? That's scaring me. The help. Yeah. I don't know how your viewers feel about it. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see if I can learn how to edit something. Just make some little beeps in there. That'd be cute. Yeah. So um, this will be going up soon. Um, this, I'm probably going to post it on YouTube. So leave a like, subscribe, um, comment. If you made it through the whole video. If you made it through the whole video. If that's not, really impressive. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for making it through the whole video. Thank you for I'm the 1,000 views. Way. Hi. This is Kelsey. I would... Um, she's... You're gonna, you should make a blog or something like that so we can throw to a blog next time we do this. I do like doing the collaboration videos because it makes it so much less uncomfortable to talk to a camera mm -hmm. when you have somebody else uh, to talk to the camera with you. Because there's people currently around us. Yeah, super uncomfortable. Making They're giving us weird looks. We're the weird gringos, but we embrace it. That's one thing. One revelation is we embrace it. So Because um, we're yeah. going to be a gringo no matter what. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, <laughs> leave a comment, share it around however you like to share it around, and make sure you're having fun with your own <laughs> adventures. Here's a graceful pan to that delicious, delicious humanness. Get to the side. Get to the side. Wow. Nope, my ear is still there.